and welcome to Together Time, Making Memorable Moments in partnership with Dementia Friendly Westmont and the Westmont Public Library. My name is Mary Ferguson, and I'm with the Birches Assisted Living in Clarendon Hills, and my partner, Patty Turkovich, who you'll meet here shortly, is with Aspired Living in Westmont, also Assisted Living in Memory Care. We are part of the Dementia Friendly uh, Community. Dementia Friendly Westmont uh, received its designation from the National uh, Dementia Friendly America in March of 2020. What that means is the village of Westmont has worked very hard to make sure that our residents of Westmont, uh, those that have the diagnosis of dementia or some other cognitive um, impairment and their care partners have the resources and support that they need in Westmont. Um, part of the committee, which includes the village of Westmont, the police and fire, uh, the chamber, the library, the park district, and local businesses have come together and wanted to put together this uh, presentation today um, on ways to spend time with your loved one um, to create new memories um, and have fun. And so as we go forward, Patty and I have done several of these, so they are on the Westmont Library's YouTube channel. Um, but today is um, for June, and we're starting the wonderful summer season. And so Patty and I will be talking to you about that today. A um, couple of things um, in the activity kit, if you did pick those up from the library, there'll be some wonderful things for you to share, and Patty and I will be discussing that. But also in there um, is a flyer, and it, I'll try to hold it up for you. It's Dementia Friendly Westmont. That has wonderful resources if you're needing extra support um, or you just have a lot of questions. We also have a email, uh, dementiafriendlywestmont. Um, Dot westmont.il.gov. It is in here, and there's also um, a sticker um, on the bag, and Patty and I also have our business cards in there. So if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. We're more than happy to answer anything that you might have. That being said, um, I'm going to kind of kick off and talk about outdoor fun. So as most of us have noticed, the weather is getting a little bit warmer. Um, it's nice to be able to wear short sleeve shirts and shorts and, and dresses. And so with that, we will be spending a lot more time outside. So we wanted to talk to you today about ways to in, enjoy that time with your loved one. Um, again, we, as Patty and I have said many, many times, this um, is not rocket science. We really want um, you to be mindful of things that you are doing around your home that you can share with your loved one. So one of the things that we wanted to talk about was, like most of us, trying to get ready to be outside more. Um, we spend so many months inside in the winter, the first thing we want to do on a nice day is to be able to get outside. But we have to prepare our homes for that. So some basic things of even pulling out the cushions to put on your chairs outside. Um, that is something that anybody can do. Um, certainly, if you're pulling those out, you may ask your loved ones to help you arrange the cushions on the chairs. And again, it doesn't matter if they're put on correctly or not. The idea is this is what we all do in order to get ready to be uh, outside more in the summer. The other thing that I love to do is uh, sweep my porch. So you get the broom out um, and it is a task, but this is something that your loved one with cognitive impairment can all certainly do. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but let's face it, we all like to have those little tasks of making sure that we're sweeping off those cobwebs or the leaves that are left over from the fall. Um, and so that is that task of, as you're holding that broom and you're sweeping, um, it's the sound. Um, and it's also that, that pride of saying, I have cleaned up my home, that I have now getting ready to move on and do more things outside. Um, it's that accomplishment, feeling that, you know what, I'm participating. I am also able to help um, get the home ready. Um, and that's what we want. We want to have a lot of successes. And so the basic thing of sweeping, now, you don't have to stand the whole time. Um, if someone has uh, some strength issues and they're sitting down, they can certainly sweep while they're sitting down. Um, even if they're in a wheelchair, those are things you can still manage to do fairly easily. Um, again, it might be a smaller area at a time, but certainly um, that is engaging. Um, and again, let's face it, after you've been sweeping, that's a great exercise as well. So keep that in mind. But also, as you are outside, it's that fresh air that we all love to have. It's the, the wind in your face and smelling you know, the fresh-cut fresh grass, whatever that might be. 
But again, we are all outside preparing. Um, some of the other things that you can do as you prepare to be outside more, um, maybe you're planting, you know, get your annual flowers. Um, again, it's hard to so you know if you're sitting on the ground, but here's kind of pre-plan how you want the flowers to look in your flower bed. So you pull out the flowers and have your loved one help you arrange. How would you like to see the flowers this year? You can do it by color, you can do it by flower, certainly if it's sun, is it partial sun, full sun, whatever it might be, but kind of have them help you arrange it ahead of time and talk about what the flowers are. Flowers have changed, you know, I remember growing up, my mom always had marigolds and she had impatience. Those are the only two flowers I think I ever had in my yard growing up. But there are so many other ones, whether they're daisies, irises, I know it's a, it's a perennial, but those are beautiful flowers right now that are coming up. So keep in mind, um, talk about, reminisce about the flowers that they remember. Did they cut flowers growing up? Did they even have a flower garden? So those are some things to keep in mind as well. Um, also, for those gardeners who want those fresh vegetables, wonderful time to start that as well. You don't have to have a huge garden of vegetables. You might just do the container. Um, and those are great. Um, you look at, you know, is it a tomato? What kind of tomatoes? And have these conversations because I remember my mom talking about victory gardens and how everybody planted a victory garden. This is a great conversation starter as you're, you're in the soil, um, even smelling the, the plants, even though they're smaller, they have that wonderful odor and you talk about, well, what are we gonna do with the tomatoes? Or what are we gonna do with the zucchini this year? And talk about how you wanna use that in the home. This is all part of, again, setting up, having great conversations with one another. Um, and remember, we always talk about how uh, you want to use all your senses, incorporate all your senses, because that affects different parts of the brain. So you want the taste and the smell, um, even the dirt, just running your fingers through dirt. It's fantastic. Um, you know, if you're going to put on gardening gloves, what does that feel like? So those are some things you, you can keep in mind as you prepare your house um, outside for spending more time there. Um, the other thing, if you already have some of your flowers, if you have your potted plants, watering. Um, it's very therapeutic, um, it's very calming, um, whether it's a small watering can that you're using, or maybe it's just the hose that you have set on shower. I know for myself, I could sit there and I could just water my plants back and forth for probably longer than I should. Um, but I think for most people, that's a very nice, um, calming uh, time to spend together. Um, so again, a loved one could be sitting next to a chair with the, with the hose, with a sprinkling can, and, and watering the flowers as you go. And part of that, again, is looking at the colors, the smell. Um, what else are you, you listening to? Um, I don't know about you, but I know every time I seem to water outside, the birds come from nowhere. So I know that they're waiting for me to leave so they can try to have breakfast or you know, lunch, whatever they're doing. But the idea really, again, is try to create these environments outside that are engaging as well. And cleaning up is one of those ways to do that. These are things that we all need to do anyway, and we feel better at the end of the day when we know that we have gotten ready for outdoor fun. Um, so with that, um, I am gonna turn it over to Patty, and she's gonna talk a little bit about more of the outdoor fun that we can have this summer, um, but I'll be back. Hello there. Um, I'm Patty Turkovich. As Mary said, I am with Aspired Living in Westmont. Um, both of us are at assisted living communities that provide assisted living in addition to memory care. Um, I am very excited about today's topic, outdoor fun. Who hasn't been clamoring to be able to be outside, enjoy the sun, the feel of it and the warmth of it on our skin and our face, the breeze in our hair, all of that sensory that is really enhanced once we can expose ourselves to the great outdoors. So when we were planning for this session, we started having a lot of fun as we usually do, quite honestly, about how are we going to do this and what can we do? Well, growing up, I will tell you, in our family, we always did a number of different outdoor games. Um, we have things that my dad brought back from Italy, things where neighbors would look at, where did you ever get that kind of stuff? And so I will tell you, we spent our outdoors, our, our lives outdoors growing up period. As soon as school was out for the summer, we were encouraged to get up and get outdoors and go have some fun. So 
Over the course of time, a lot of our favorite games have been modified due to, oh, you know, people deciding that they were way too dangerous. One of my favorite games was Jarts, which were those arrows with the pointy dagger at the end that you would throw to land in a circle. Well, they've since modified that and it's now a weighted beanbag at the bottom or just a weight that you're throwing and it's not nearly as fun because you don't get the arc like you do with it, but it's definitely a lot safer. So we were talking about what sort of games would make sense and going back to things that are familiar and that way, again, we're going to be able to engage motor memory and we will have that familiar sensation of activities that we would do normally back in the day, perhaps. We came up with several things that are flexible and will let you adapt to doing them inside should it be a rainy day. As Mary and I say all the time, and she just said a moment ago, none of this is rocket science. We're really just looking to break it down for you so you don't have to think about it as that primary caregiver. Um, these are activities that that wonderful friend who always wants to know how can they help you, family members that don't know what to do or how to engage, um, grandchildren, nieces and nephews, anyone who shows an interest and these are ways to entice people to develop an interest and in how to spend time in a meaningful way. So my activity is playing off of the darts, jarts, toss games, and even a little smack of bozo buckets. Um, so in your kits, if you picked one up, you will receive a nice bright colorful cone. You'll have two rings. And then we're also giving you two bean bags. As I pick these up, you're probably recognizing already, you're hearing that crinkle. Let me tell you, when Mary picked these up, that was what she had to do immediately. <laughs> so thanks, someone's enjoying the tactile and the auditory sensation of this, absolutely. As well, some of our loved ones. So it's interesting, you can play with it, you can mold it, you can kind of just keep balling it up. You can hear that crinkling sound. So it's all stimulating many areas of the brain, something this simple. And because it's that, I don't know what you would call this faux nylon, so it's going to have that sound to it. Be aware though, for some people, that noise may be bothersome. So always tune in and watch to see how they're responding. So the concept behind these gadgets and devices is that classic jarts game. So while these rings are small, you might want to have those down and then we're going to have to pretend here, folks. So pretend you are in your yard and you've got your ring set up a decent length away. Again, compensate, understand where your loved one's mobility is, their flexibility, their strength. And so maybe it is just a foot out from me and I toss it in there. And the whole goal is movement, hand-eye coordination. So again, you see what I was saying too, how you could do this indoors if you wanted. But if you're outdoors and your person is stronger, you're going to have it further. So that way they have to throw it further. We've gone with high contrast colors. And the reason for that is because it's best. With memory loss diseases, many of them, there will be visual changes that happen. So by having high contrast, that's going to give our loved ones a better idea of what to focus in on. You can say yellow, you can say orange, and they're bright and they're not going to be something that's lost in the mix. The other thing I would caution you about is making sure that wherever you set up, you don't have a lot of distractions because if it's a very busy area, and that could mean something with busy patterns. Say, for example, your cushions are high, bold prints and it's too much going on. You're going to want to make sure your loved one isn't facing that. Or if it's too chaotic an area, again, Simplify so focus can stay on the task at hand. The other thing that I love about this is that if, again, depending on the individual, you have to be the one to recognize where your loved one's at and what makes the most sense. But if you're tossing this, you're then getting up to go get those bags again.
And maybe you're with someone who's going to pick them up, bend over and pick them up for you. But by switching gears, because we've given you two rings, you can have them kind of like cornhole or being bad game, whatever you like calling that particular game, but it's modified. So you can have someone tossing and you both toss and then you both walk over and go to the other one. Um, I spent an afternoon doing this for three hours with someone in my family. And I was amazed at how much they got into it. Um, but it was the simplicity of it. It was the rhythm of it. They started getting really good. I have to admit they did better than I did. But again, that exercise walking back and forth that is getting a person stronger. It's helping keep that body upright. It's getting oxygen that's feeding the brain. So a lot of little things that end up helping our loved ones in the long run. So I talked about tossing these back and forth into these lovely little rings. The other thing that you could do, again, modify if need be, because I don't like to get frustrated as most people do, but maybe this is something that you set up really close. Let's see how well I am at this. All right, I got one. So, and if it was further away, chances are I wouldn't get it at all. But this is about setting people up to be successful and having fun. This is reminiscent of carnival games. And this is reminiscent of that ring toss game that we had in our backyard. If you have a hula hoop, again, looking at modifying, if you have a hula hoop, preferably brightly colored, you could put that in the yard and use these to toss in there. You could even use the rings to toss into that. Um, maybe a laundry basket. So again, a person can be successful. If you're finding that these rings get lost in the grass, then get for all intents and purposes, get a, a laundry basket, get a bucket. Um, use those as your catch bin for whatever you're choosing to toss, whether it's the bags or the rings. Um, when you are doing these activities, again, you're talking about fine motor skills, you're talking about hand-eye coordination, you're talking about walking, which helps get, get that oxygen to the brain, helps the person clear their brain, feel better, de-stress, de-agitate. Um, all of that will also help folks sleep better at night and feel more calm come evening. One of the other things you should be doing as you're setting this up is asking, would you prefer to shoot to the cone or should we do the bean bags into the rings? Let them choose, let them be part of the process. And while you may think these things, again, are childish, keep in mind that they really are stage appropriate. And even if your loved one is more capable and not quite at that stage, that's when you're doing it and you can share this. It's better visual separation and take it on yourself. For me, this is a lot easier for me to see than seeing one of these in the lawn. So that's why we're gonna do it. Let's just have some fun. And then once you get into the game, those questions will fade away. They won't be as focused on that because they're going to be engaged. This is another thing that can be adapted in many different ways. Um, you know, the cone, you can just create this as you set it out and see how many times you can walk from your starting point down and around before you want to sit down. Again, a great way to get some exercise in, a great way to be outdoors with a focused purpose, you're going to have them counting. You can have um, counting steps. How many steps do you think it'll take us to reach that? And then back. So again, it might seem silly, just a little prop, but these props really provide great opportunity to build upon. Um, if you have little ones, that's when you can put them to work. And trust me, I'm not above doing that. You know, if you're with someone who's not really mobile, you can set this up, engage the little ones and make it more of a family event where everyone's tossing at it. And then the little ones can scamper off and bring it back for you. And that interaction, intergenerational programming is what we call it in the industry, is so meaningful because it's helping to connect with other generations. And what I think is really important is it's helping younger people understand how to best interact with their loved one. Um, it breaks my heart all these years when I hear people say things like, I don't want the grandchildren or the children to remember mom or dad or whomever this way. 
it's not a bad thing because they have a disease. We shouldn't be thinking that way and not to get preachy on you. But what we should be doing is teaching our younger ones how to adapt our thinking to help someone in need. Because trust me, they will remember the positive moments that they did in interacting and having fun, as well as they will remember the moments prior to the disease. So it's making all of those moments memorable in as positive a way as possible. So encourage people to not be afraid. There are some great books. I know they have some at the library that talk about how to talk with younger people about memory impairment. And I would also encourage you to think about younger people tend to be more adaptable and going with the flow than we give them credit for. And so as long as we can appropriately explain what's going on, they'll be fine with it. Um, and it's one of those classics of give the information that makes sense so you can really stage it out by what age your younger people in the family are. But again, it's a great way for us all to come together, be with our loved one who has memory loss, and have fun. And I think the bright colors are reminiscent of it's summer, carnivals, let's play and have a good time. I would also encourage you to look at what other games you have that might be modified. Just because you have the official yard toss dart game, I wouldn't use darts even if I could get my hands on them, just for safety reasons. But if you've got those big rings and you've got those big heavier weights, that's something else that can be done outdoors. Um, maybe if they enjoy playing tennis, you get a tennis racket and let them just bounce the tennis ball on that. And that's another great activity of being outdoors. Um, when Mary was talking about getting the yard ready, I couldn't agree more, you know, getting the cushions out there, sweeping off the patio, putting out the hoses, all of that helps a person feel part and parcel of their home environment. So it's really important for us to remember inclusion, not exclusion. If we don't allow them to be part of our lives, we're diminishing them and we don't want to do that. The whole idea is to create moments and yes, it might be faster for you to just hit it and do it yourself, but if you can help them help you, it'll be a much more pleasant experience. So I'm reaching the end about my combs and my bean bags and my rings. Um, Mary is going to be stepping back here to talk about another activity that we've come up with, but I would really encourage you to think outside the box when you get these things. You have some ideas to start with, but maybe you pull out a couple of gardening pails that you may have in your garage, set them up kind of like the Bozo bucket stand and throw the bags or the rings into those. Um, make it fun, make it playful. And again, you can also bring this stuff inside on a rainy day. And anything that keeps the body moving is a win for us all. So with that being said, I'm going to turn things back over to Mary, and she will share with you a few more ideas. Thank you. Okay, so I am back. So I love the, the whole idea of the ring toss, um, the bozo buckets. It's just fun. Um, as Patty had mentioned, from us growing up, I, you know, same thing. When, when it got nice out, we were outside. We didn't have to be told to get outside. Um, as soon as, you know, we had breakfast, pretty much we were outside trying to be creative, doing whatever we could to keep ourselves occupied. And we got very creative about what we did. Um, so again, Patty had the ring toss. Um, the, I, I did love the, um, the bean bags. I thought that was great. So if you have, happen to have your own set of, you know, the cornhole or uh, bags, whatever, you know, everybody calls it a little something different, then also use that. Um, if there's nothing wrong with using things that you already have and kind of modifying. Um, you know, the bag game is kind of fun and surprisingly, Patty had mentioned, sometimes the more you do it, the better you get. Um, and so again, that repetitive um, is the more success um, your loved one will have, the more that they will enjoy that. And then again, are things that you can continue to do and modify. Um, so also in your kit, if you picked one up, you're going to notice, pull these off, um, a nice little colorful Velcro disc. It's actually um, on the back. You open it up and you put your hand through it. Now, Patty and I go back and forth on how we should do this. Um, I like my hand all the way in there. Um, but the idea is this is um, like catching a baseball. 
so there's also a Velcro ball, uh, a tennis ball that's a little bit harder. And then there's one that's pretty soft. So again, oh, as it flows away. Danny, can you give me another soft one? I, can it rolled away, which happens, tends to happen sometimes. <laughs> Perfect, see? That wasn't even planned. Um, but the idea, what you just saw, was to have um, the engagement like you're playing catch. Now you can have, someone can hang on to it in the back, just this way. They can put their hand behind, if that's easier, so they're feeling like they are putting on a mitt or a glove and it's easier to move around to catch the ball. Um, or even just holding it this way and kind of moving it around based on, on uh, what they're comfortable with or what you're comfortable with. Um, my kids always play baseball, so I'm very comfortable wearing a, a mitt. I don't know if Patty is, but I am. Um, but the idea is to, to have a game of catch. And again, we're trying to modify uh, this in the sense that we want to make this is easy as possible. Um, but again, if somebody played baseball if, and they were used to wearing a, a, a mitt that if you have one around the house, by all means, try that. Um, the tennis ball that we gave you, obviously <laughs> doesn't bounce as well as we would like it, like a normal tennis ball. But the idea really is it has a lot of interesting texture on it um, and very, very col colorful. So again, if someone does have some uh, visual issues, this is very brightly colored. I would caution you though, be a little careful throwing this because that could hurt if you're not aware. So you may wanna start underhand. If you have your own tennis ball, certainly you could do that as well. Um, but this definitely has the feeling of, uh, of a tennis ball. Uh, a couple things that uh, you can do with this is rub it between your hands, um, almost as a massage, you could uh, on their legs, their thighs. This also has that nice uh, motion in your hand. So for some folks, this might be more uh, calming um, or therapeutic. And let's face it, who doesn't like a little bit of a massage? So if you're able to do it up and down their arm, whatever you might want, that's also very helpful. Um, but again, the idea is these will stick to the mitt. And this is a game that most of um, our loved ones are gonna remember, whether if they played it, they experienced it, they went to a, a, a live baseball game, their grandkids, their own kids. Um, this is, we did talk about America's favorite pastime. This is something when you talk baseball, uh, is easily recognizable, easily remembered. Um, so it's very nice to be able to play a game of catch back and forth. So in your kit, you'll have one of the discs, but you'll have two of the balls. Um, again, the idea is, hey, maybe your loved one can catch the ball better than you, and you are the one who needs the disc. But again, it's the idea of, of playing toss, um, playing catch, whatever that might be. Um, this is also something you can bring inside the house if you need it um, on a rainy day and hopefully not have too many broken windows. Um, like I said, this ball, I would caution um, because you could certainly have some uh, breakage in the house if you had it inside. Um, but it is a nice option for those. Um, the other thing too, if, if you have arthritis, this is much easier to handle. Um, you're not having to hold it like a normal baseball that might slip out of your hand. Um, again, you can hold it this way. You can toss it underhand, overhand, whatever's going to whatever's going to work for you. Um, you know, the other thing too is if you um, are finding that this is a little too easy, certainly you can get rid of the the disc and you can uh, play catch, um, underhand catch is always nice. Again, think of everything that your brain has to do in order to make that happen. You know, every time they're, you're, you are catching a ball, throwing a ball, there's certain steps that have to happen and every part of your brain is being activated and that is phenomenal. And, and it's not just the one time, it's every single time that you do it. So again, that's great brain exercise. Um, and the more you do it, the better, um, response you're going to have, the easier it becomes. So you're creating those new pathways, which is really important. Um, so this is great. This is fun. Um, again, if somebody likes a mitt, use a mitt. I think that that's fantastic. Um, so again, one of the things too, Patty had mentioned with the beanbags, this is pretty loud too. So be mindful of that because it could get a little annoying. Um, but it also makes someone aware of, wow, that's an interesting sound. Um, Maybe they can relate to something that way, uh, but also it's, again, the senses, which are very important because it's a different part of your brain. 
So this will also be in your kit. So have fun with this. I think that, you know, Patty and I, um, we had a lot of fun trying to pick these. We wanted to make sure colors were bright so that you could see them. So, um, you know, certainly these are something that you will see in the lawn um, if they don't make it into the mint. So a couple other ideas that Patty and I have, uh, we're discussing, and again, it is very interesting because I think we all have different childhoods and we have different childhood memories. So a couple of the other things, Patty had talked about a bozo buckets, taking out your pails, but bocce ball, if you have bocce ball at home, get that out. And again, you don't have to necessarily follow the correct rules the whole time, but it's the idea of having that interaction, having a little bit more fun and being outside. It is great exercise to move around, to have your, um, the fresh air, the sun in your face. Um, you know, you can take the rings that Patty showed you and take this or the bocce ball and try to roll it into the ring. Um, you, again, we want you to be creative. So anything that you have at home, how can you modify it? How can you make it where it could be a fun outdoor game? Because use your imagination and that's the fun thing. And so if you do have kids around, um, whether they're three or four or whether they're you know 15 or even 20, let them come up with some ideas because I bet they get pretty creative as well. You know, I know we've, in the past, if you've watched some of our other videos in, in March, we talked about basketball and March Madness. Get the basketball out and try to fit that big basketball into the small ring. There's so many things you can do. If you have the basketballs, if you have, um, what I would say with dodgeball, not that you're playing dodgeball, but the idea of like the four score where you bounce and catch or you bounce and you, you push it off to somebody else. The, again, try to be creative. Outdoor activity is so healthy for a couple of reasons. Again, we've already talked about it's, it's the fresh air, but also um, you are burning calories. So someone is going to have a better appetite. So I know for myself, if I'm outside, um, I, I'm hungry um, at the end of the day. I sleep much better. So who doesn't like to get a, a better night's sleep? So again, if you have those activities going on outside, all of this stuff, even if it's 15 or 20 minutes in the morning and 15 or 20 minutes in the evening, do, do all of those things. Um, a couple of things I know Patty and I have, we have talked about when we were planning all this was even going for a walk. Going for a walk outside um, is an easy task to do. Um, and I'm not saying you have to walk around the block, even if you walk to the end of the street or you say we're going to walk to the Joneses, which is three houses down. It's movement. Um, it's really kind of taking in your surroundings. And you think about that, everything that you are hearing and smelling and listening to, every sense that you have is being um, absorbed and your brain is having to figure out what it is and where to store that. So the idea really is this going for a walk and listening to your surroundings and being aware of your surroundings and discussing that, it's actually very good for your brain. Most of us don't even think about it. You go for a walk, you go outside, you just are making sure you're coming back around and you're going, getting back to the right house. But use this as an opportunity to point out, do you hear that bird? You know, what, what kind of bird do you think it is? My dad, I don't know how, he never really talked a lot about birds, but you, he always knew the cardinal and he knew the robin. For some reason, those were the two bird sounds. So again, ask, what, what kind of bird do you think that might be? Um, if the sun is out, if the clouds are out, how fun is it to, to even sit and look at the clouds and, and kind of discuss that, the colors of the clouds? Maybe not what it might look like, but the colors. The clouds are more than just white. So again, really, when you're outside, be as creative and as imaginative as you can and make up your own games. Make up your own activities if you if you choose to. Um, but including your loved one in that will be um, more enjoyable for everyone. Um, and again, the idea is you want to have a better um, interaction. You want to have these. And we talk about making you know memorable moments. That's kind of the goal of all of our uh, time with you is to have you be creative, be imaginative. It doesn't take a lot. We always want to give you some ideas and some fun things, places to start, but certainly, you know, come up with something. If you knew that your loved one had a special game that they liked, absolutely. Even a, as I'm talking here, even filling up water balloons and tossing that, that's fun. Um, that might be more fun than you think. So the idea would be is even if, if the balloon breaks and you get water on you, 
that is fun. That's humorous. It's a nice, again, interaction that you can have. So again, keep in mind any of those things that might um, bring you two together. Um, if the, you know you have a loved one that's younger that wants to uh, you know, fill up the water balloons for you, because I'll tell you, kids certainly do like the water balloon toss, maybe a little bit more than we might. Um, but that intergenerational is very important. So hopefully this gave you an idea of some things you can do um, outside as well. And so um, I'm gonna turn this back over to Patty just to kind of wrap up a few more things, but we hope that you uh, have a wonderful June and, and you're able to use some of these things that we put in the kit for you. Um, but I will turn it back over to Patty. Thank you. So as promised, I'm back. So June 23rd, is National Hydration Day. You will have a bottle of water in your bag for that very reason. One of the most overlooked matters for anybody with memory impairments is to stay mindful of hydration. Dehydration leads to behaviors, exhaustion. It leads into hospitalizations way more than you'd ever want to imagine. So be mindful of how much people are drinking. And this ties into um, my last point that I'm here to talk about. And Mary touched on it a little bit. Um, one of the easiest things to do is getting outside and going for a walk. And a walk doesn't necessarily mean around the neighborhood like she suggested, but what we want to do is make it fun and engaging. So I'm reintroducing the concept of a scavenger hunt to you. You can modify this to whatever level your loved one is. You can do a scavenger hunt just in your yard. You know what's out there. So maybe create a little checklist of, you know, let's find the birdhouse, let's find the water bath, let's find the um, flags, the garden flags that you have out. Do you see a red flower? Can you find a yellow flower? Um, anything that you may have in your backyard, um, or because you probably know your neighborhood, look for mailbox names, look for different decorative mailboxes, trees, tree leaves, Think in terms of when we were young and we would go on scavenger hunts. It was much more engaging, much more interesting, typically. Um, and it gives that brain another way to exercise and think very differently than it typically would be working for us. When we are walking through the neighborhood, the other thing that you can do, look to engage senses. So... You're not gonna be looking to cut flowers, but like last night I got home and my peonies are in full bloom. So I was so excited. I went running into the back and I'm standing there smelling all of them. I can't have them in the house because they're too strong and I have allergies, but I can enjoy them outdoors. So having that opportunity. Oh, and the lilacs that are blooming everywhere right now. Um, and I know some of them are starting to actually fade away. But as you're walking through, take advantage of those. On your scavenger hunt, think in terms of what would typically be seen on your path. You know, looking for an ant, looking for a bee, looking for a fly. Um, you know, do you smell chlorine at the neighbor's pool? Um, Anything that will engage those additional senses is going to light up another part of the brain. So take advantage of that. You know, walks are calm, they're slow, they're relaxing, they're designed for our physical well being, our digestion, all of those great things. But we can get more out of it if we look to engage. And that's not to say that there isn't a time when you just want to have a nice, quiet, casual stroll, but mix it up. And as you become more tuned into what may be around the neighborhood or what's in the backyard, think about how fun that would be for grandpa with the little grandchildren to be outdoors looking for, you know, the garden hose, the little pool toy that was left out from the baby pool. Any of those things can just be put on a list and let people have fun with it. And it, it's all about that cognitive awareness, looking and identifying. So I wouldn't suggest a long list, probably about five items, wouldn't take long at all and just say, let's have a scavenger hunt. And one of the other tips I will give you is when you say it, presentations, everything. So you say, hey, let's do a scavenger hunt and you're smiling and excited about it. They're going to get excited about it and think, oh yeah, if we say you want to do a scavenger hunt, all we're doing is we're putting kind of a dark uh, 
little cloud over it and we're overwhelming them with something that they may or may not want to do because they may not be remembering exactly what that scavenger hunt means. Um, I love the concept of the scavenger hunt because you could even bring it indoors again on a rainy day. Find a pillow that has blah blah pattern on it. Find an article of red clothing. Um, find a vase. Again, looking at around, what's around the space, what's around the house, what makes sense. But the whole push is to get out in the outdoors and take advantage of enhancing all of our senses with that sun, the wind, the breeze, listening for the rustling of leaves on trees. That's one of my favorite sensations when out there, more so in autumn when they're crispy and crunchy. That's the absolute best for me. But watch and see their reaction. Don't overload with so much information that they can't enjoy the experience. Um, when you are looking at the scavenger list and you are coming up with the concept of, you know, do you see the garden flag with the ladybug? Don't say where it is, just kind of let them focus in on it and find it for themselves. If you find after any length of time, you can walk with them over there and identify it. Again, modify for your loved one. The other thing that I wanna to touch on is that when we're aging, there are also other issues that can surface for us. Um, we may be hit with macular degeneration or um, retinal eye detachments and all sorts of things that can really impact our ability to see what someone may be looking for um, or even playing these games. And that's where you're gonna to wanna to do hand over hand and encourage them going back for a moment to these games. Keep in mind, people can still do it. They're just going to need you to encourage more about how to pull it off, you know, whether you're guiding their hand so they can get it into the circle or you're coaching them by moving their arm a little bit and saying, throw it hard or throw it soft. Um, we can still do all of these, just modify and keep in mind our loved ones. You know, when you're doing your scavenger hunt, you may want to focus more on sensation and auditory. Um, as Mary was saying about listening for the birds, listening for the pool filters, which I think is just synonymous for me with summertime. Um, you're going to want to listen for car traffic, horns beeping, kids' bicycle bells, whatever you know to be in the community where you live, Focus on that. And um, when you are looking at what else you can um, pick up auditorily, think in terms of mowers. You know, everyone's lawn is getting cut. Do they smell that fresh cut grass? All of that is going to enhance their senses. It's going to enhance their brain. And it's creating a little more exercise than just sitting there taking it all in. Um, engagement. That's really what this all boils down to. If we keep our loved ones better engaged, they will have a better experience. You will have a more memorable experience as well. You know, when we're talking a little bit, we touched on gardening. If you loved gardening, your loved one loved gardening. One of the things that you may want to suggest, again, holiday seasons are past. Mother's Day is gone, but Father's Day is coming up. Maybe what you encourage the adult children who never know what to buy for you, raise garden box. Or maybe you go out and you buy some garden containers that can be elevated higher or those garden sacks that are at chair level. You can sit next to them and garden into them. The reason for that is, as Mary touched on, there is so much research that reinforces the benefits of all of us putting our hands into soil. And it sounds so counterintuitive in this time when we have a heightened awareness of germs and ick. But the reality is, is the research, research is out there to prove how beneficial it is for each of our brains. So if you have a raised gardening box, if you have a way to garden, even if they are mildly interested, it at least gives that opportunity for you to do something together. And it gives family something to gather around outdoors when they come over too. Um, but when you have those flowers and it may be your in-bed grounds that you're going and smelling the peonies or going and touching those bearded iris lilies that are in bloom right now, 
all of that gives a great sensation. You're not destroying nature, you're enjoying it at a heightened level. Touching, smelling, and again, if the vision is there, great. Um, so figure out as you're going through it, how to incorporate senses. Any sensory connection is going to enhance the brain. And I can't encourage you enough, put together a short list of scavenger hunt items. That is something fun that will keep grandchildren and grandparents busy. And it's a great way for interactions. And um, don't forget to drink your water on June 23rd for sure, but drink it every day. That being said, um, Mary and I thank you for joining us today. Um, please, if you haven't picked up a kit, check with the library to see if they have any left over. If you have any questions, our business cards are in the bags and the library knows how to get a hold of this as well. And then again, the dementia friendly brochures are in the racks here at the library. So it's a great resource for you to know what else is out there to help you as you care for your loved one. So I hope you all get out there and enjoy the great outdoors and happy June. Thank you. Bye-bye.